Captain's Log, star date 10-14-74.35. We are on a diplomatic mission. An important Vulcan ambassador is traveling from his homeworld to the monastery at Pajem. Capturing this ambassador would be a major coup for the Klingons or Orions. So we are on our way to escort him, Ambassador Soketh, to keep him safe. Whatever that means, necessarily wise. On screen. Greetings. Thank you for agreeing to escort the ambassador to Pajem. Ambassador Soketh is currently attending a ritual to honor the end of the Call Rec holiday. He will be done soon, but the ambassador is hesitant to use transporter technology. His bias against the transporters is not logical, but I have come to accept it. I believe that Soketh would be much more comfortable traveling by shuttlecraft. I have received clearance for you to land near the Ambassador's location. I look forward to meeting you in person. Time. The ultimate frontier. These are the stories of the temporal agents. Their mission? To correct all anomalies. To keep space-time intact. To boldly go where no one has gone Starfleet Shuttlecraft, this is Vulcan Orbital Control. You are cleared to land at the requested coordinates. Welcome to Vulcan. Please enjoy your stay. <coughs> Alright, well this is a nice uh... Nice place you guys got here. Welcome to Vulcan. Do you have any questions? What business is... What business do you have at Pajem? My business is my own. If you must know more, I require a meeting with the abbot. He will not use subspace communications. So if I am to receive his counsel, I need to meet with him directly. Do you have any questions? Tell me about Pajem. Pajem is a small world near Andoria. It is sacred to our people. There have been Vulcans on Pajem for centuries. In 2152, the ancient buildings that housed our monastery were destroyed by the Andorians. <coughs> the Andorians? But they are also part of the Federation. It was a failing in our logic that led to conflict with the Andorians. We have corrected our error. After the Federation was founded, a group of Andorians, Vulcans, and humans rebuilt the monastery as a symbol of peaceful coexistence and cooperation. Since then, a group of monks has lived there. 
They study the ideals of Sirach. Do you have any questions? Captain, I regret to inform you that we have come to an impasse in completing your mission. Allow me to explain. As you know, Pajem is sacred to the Vulcan people, and access to it is strictly prohibited. Ordinarily, this would not present any difficulty, but Savin, the leader of the order that maintains the monastery, has chosen this moment to illogically refuse to grant Ambassador Sokhev permissions to meet with the abbot at Pajem. This is most <coughs> abnormal. Can this trip wait until Savin changes his mind? The ambassador has considered going to the council to request that they overrule Savin, but the process will take time that he simply does not have. If the ambassador is unable to complete his journey to Pajem now, he will have to delay it until after the trade conference at Kordan is complete, and that could take weeks. I wonder why Savin won't grant the ambassador permission. The ambassador, I'm afraid, has spent too much time off-world. I have seen it change him. His interactions with other species have grown easier over the years, but our own people have become more challenging for him to deal with. Perhaps you could speak to Savin. I know he has a great deal of respect for Starfleet, and you might have an easier time than he has in convincing him to grant the Ambassador's request. Alright, well, let me speak to Savin then. <coughs> I priest seven. Peace and long life. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Is there any way I can persuade you to allow Sokath to visit Pajem? I will permit it if you will pledge to me, on your honor as a Starfleet officer, that you will protect Pajem from harm. Sokath says his reasons for wanting to speak to the abbot are private. I will accept that, but only if you are with him. I know I can trust Starfleet. Please, protect Pajen from any who would violate its sanctity. Do you have any questions? Excellent. Our departure has been delayed long enough by the whims of one man. I am prepared for the journey and can leave immediately. Let's go. <coughs> Come on, Ambassador. <clears throat> we have a bit of a ways to walk. I you like that move. <laughs> you have quite the luscious planet here, Ambassador. <clears throat> Seems to be thriving plant life. Tarsi? Let's go. Take us in.
agreed. Sensors on maximum. Klingon ships. <coughs> Bring us in. This is Red Alert. To all Klingon vessels, target their warp drive. There will be no escaping our vengeance this time. Time to have some revenge for the Metal Ark. On screen. It's a day for words. My fellow captains were blinded by our vengeance toward the shapeshifter aboard your vessel. They have died with honor. But if I am to die this day, then I would prefer to regale the halls of Stobokor with the tale of that foul creature's death. Shapeshifter? Ha! So even the mighty Federation has been fooled by the beast. Your guest from Vulcan is not as he or she seems, Captain. They are an undine. They put on a false face and try to control us. But we Klingons know better. We will hunt them down until the last of these honorless dogs die screaming. <clears throat> and undine, have you any proof? Proof? Ah! Allow me to stick a blade in its belly while I look it in the eye while it dies. That should be proof enough, even for Starfleet. I'll take that into consideration. If you wish the honor of the kill yourself, then it is yours to have. So long as the Undine dies, I will meet my death with eyes wide open and victory in my heart. I await your decision. Close hailing frequencies. <coughs> they clean us warp drive, shields, weapon systems are all offline. I don't think they have impulse power. Whatever you decide to do, they can't really do much about it. The Undine are physically superior to humans and consider anyone from our dimension to be an inferior life form. <clears throat> Their vessels are more than a match for the board. They represent a great threat to Starfleet. Where is Ambassador Sokath now? A sound precaution. Agreed. <clears throat> Indian come from an event known as the Fluidic Space. They use quantum singularities to move into ours. I'm afraid much of their technology still remains a mystery to us. But one thing is certain, it is not to be underestimated. So why use a Starfleet vessel? That I can't say, Captain, but as the Undine are virtually unknown in the Beta Quadrant, my guess is that they are aiming to conceal their presence here. And the Klingons? <clears throat> what the Klingons are saying could be true, Captain, if the Undine are in the Beta Quadrant, it might just be that the Klingons sniffed them out before us. In this case, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> the Undine are a science or a species that was first encountered by the crew of the USS Voyager. They cataloged them as species 8472. As the Klingon commander indicated, they are indeed capable of changing shape. Additionally, they possess telepathic abilities that aid them in infiltrating the cultures of other species. So Ambassador Sokath could be one. I'm afraid that is a conclusion that we cannot rule out, Captain. I could conduct a test to determine if the Ambassador is who he claims to be. Unfortunately, that would violate his ambassador ambassadorial immunity. My patience is growing thin, Captain. 
<laughs> if you lack the stomach to slay the beast aboard your vessel, then any Klingon here would gladly do it for you. I'd hate for you to stain that pretty Starfleet uniform with Undine blood. Very generous, but unnecessary. Then the beast is slain? Makka! Very good. Perhaps you've the heart of a warrior after all. Let me look upon our enemy. And tonight, we will dine together as warriors and drink to the honored dead. I present Ambassador Soketh. Captain. I take my meditations very seriously. Why have I been summoned to the bridge? Accused! Meet your accuser. Alive? You're a fool, Captain! Strike now before it's too late! Not without proof, Kataki. You want proof? Then lower your shields and allow me to beam over. Once the Undine's blood coats my blade, you'll see it for what it truly is. A grint hound in Tark's clothing. Ambassador, allow me to explain. There's no need, Captain. The situation is not difficult to unravel. My concern lies in the logic of you entertaining this Klingon's meritless claim. Meritless, but not unreasonable. A most illogical conclusion. Allow us to examine the facts, Captain. You have a crippled Klingon vessel, whose captain has made unsubstantiated claims that I am an Undine, a species that is known to both the Federation and the Klingon <coughs> Empire as a considerable threat. Thus, a reasonable consideration. Potentially, but only if a great many other factors were to be true. Is it not much more likely that the Klingons have, in the face of defeat, instead sought to exploit Starfleet's desire for peaceful resolutions to conflict in order to repair their vessel and renew their assault. Status of the Klingon vessel. Weapons and operable warp drive is still offline. Wait. They're detecting an energy surge. They're engaging their cloaking device. Red alert! Lock weapons! A true warrior strikes without mercy, Captain. I only hope to teach you this lesson personally before the Undine does. We may not be able to best your vessel, but a Klingon knows many roads to victory. The beast may have evaded my vengeance for now, but I can still ruin its plans here at Pajem. Fire! Scan the area. The energy signatures on Pajem's surfaces there. In the vicinity of the monastery, they appear to be transporter signals. Life signs indicate they're Klingons. I've taken an away team down. No, it is too dangerous. A wise precaution. Though I admit I am eager to see my people safe, I will await word until the monastery is secured. And Captain, let not my journey here be for naught. Away team, to transport room one. A wise precaution. Beam down. Syria, <coughs> and make our way toward the monastery, which is located. Yep. Reading multiple Klingon patrols between us and the main building, sir. Recommend we proceed with caution. Stay alert. We need to find the monks. Take him down! Oh, that's the monks. Ah, whoops. Okay. Up team. 
We're not out of this yet. Be ready. Receiving an alert from Vulcan. Pella says she must speak to you immediately. I'll patch her through to your tricorder. I have <clears throat> terrible news. Vulcan security forces have discovered the body of Ambassador Soket. They have determined that he was killed by a phaser blast at short range. His remains were discovered in a stasis chamber hidden in a cavern beneath the Ambassador's residence. The Ambassador on your ship. The one that I have been working for is an imposter. You need to be very careful. This imposter was able to fool Sokes closest associates for months. He is correct and very patient. Now that he has been discovered, he will be dangerous. Head the security team said for each ambassador of his quarters, but he's gone. I searched the ship, but sir, unauthorized use of the transport is detected. <laughs> the Vulcan government is requesting that the imposter Soget be detained and returned to Vulcan for questioning. Sir, whomever used the transporter erased the logs, but I have a feeling that the imposter is on the planet's surface. I recommend we locate him immediately. We'll find him. Such emotion on your face. I see now my deception has been exposed. Pity. Capturing the abbot so we could replace him as well would have been beneficial. But we are strong. We will prevail. You are weak, and the weak shall perish. Oh. <laughs> Buddy, you got ugly real fast. Turn to the Crimson Fury and search for the Undine ship. We need to find the Undine and take it back to Starfleet. Nolan, the Crimson Fury, beam us out of here. Captain, there's an Undine ship on the intercept course. So the Crimson Fury doesn't have the armaments to handle an Undine attack. Starfleet reports that it is sending ships to assist us, but they're about 60 seconds out. We have to hold out until the reinforcements get here. Captain, if we target their torpedoes, we might have a chance. <laughs> we gotta hold out!
Ten seconds. Thank goodness. Not a moment too soon. I see that. Ah! Hit him hard. from the USS Challenger, Captain. This is Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger. Glad to see we made it here in time to lend you a hand. Perhaps you'll return the favor someday. LaForge out. Cover the final data transmissions from the Undine vessel, as well as samples of the organic material that was used to create the ship. We need to get all this back to Starfleet Intelligence. They may be able to decrypt the message and tell us more. Helm, take us out.